Est from Greater Germany. Yours, Werner. The annual sports parade in Moscow. One of the first color films made in the Soviet Union. The country was completely under Stalin's control. The diary of Andrei Arzhilovsky. The portraits of our leaders are now displayed the same way icons used to be. A round portrait framed and attached to a pole. Very convenient. Hoisted onto your shoulder and you're on your way. It's just the same as people used to do for church holidays. They had their activists then, we have ours now. Different paths, the same old bloody nonsense. The parades masked the reality of Soviet life. Starvation had killed six million people. Secret police made mass arrests, including many of the Red Army's officers. Railway worker Yevdokim Nikolaev was a witness. Terror and violence are widespread. I keep hearing about arrests and searches going on everywhere around me. The courts are overflowing with people who are being put on trial for the sort of things that would have been encouraged before. Everybody is too frightened to think, let alone speak out about their horrendous hunger and slavery. Yevdokim Nikolaev's diary was used in evidence against him. He was executed. During these pre-war years of terror, Stalin's purges claimed the lives of more than 700,000 people. The home movies of Hitler's mistress, Eva Braun, reveals the intimate circle around the Fuhrer. Here in the mountains, Hitler would brood and plot. In the summer of 1939, he decided to invade Poland. But he had to make sure the Soviet Union would not defend the Poles in alliance with Britain and France. On the 23rd of August, Hitler made a deal with Stalin. His propaganda minister, Josef Goebbels, recorded the sensational news in his diary. Yesterday, announced the non-aggression pact with Moscow. Great world sensation. The whole European power balance shaken. London and Paris can't believe it. The Führer has made a clever chess move. Let's see how the world will react to this smokescreen. Hitler's pact with Stalin contained a secret clause, an agreement to carve up Eastern Europe. One week later, on the 1st of September, 1939, Germany invaded Poland. Britain marched off to war. It is unbelievable, but true. At 11.15, Mr. Chamberlain spoke. This morning, the British ambassador in Berlin handed the German government a final note. He said that His Majesty's government had sent Hitler an ultimatum to withdraw their troops from Poland. There had been no reply, and the ultimatum had expired at 11 o'clock. We are now at war with Germany. This country is at war with Germany. It brought tears to one's eyes. Khaki-clad boys everywhere. The speeded-up evacuation of three million children and invalids from the cities all these things have come to us. 
a supposed civilized people. Warsaw has been bombed. German tanks and aeroplanes have been shot down and war is once more striding across our world. By the 27th of September, Germany had conquered Poland. Teacher Heim Kaplan witnessed the fall of his country. Beautiful Warsaw has been destroyed like Sodom and Gomorrah. There are streets which have been all but wiped off the face of the earth. In the midst of the ruins, thousands of human beings lie buried. Hitler now turned his attention to the West. At the outbreak of war, Britain prepared for the worst. An air raid drill at a school in Hove, Sussex. In the months that followed, it all seemed a bit quiet for a war. Miss Vivian Hall was a shorthand typist from Putney. This war seems remote from us as yet. The quiet nights and days, in contrast to the constant and destroying air raids we expected, are bewildering. But we are certain they will come sooner or later. We're all waiting for the heavens to throb into life with hundreds of planes, which will pour fire, gas and death upon us. But fire, gas and death didn't come. Tonight, children, everywhere thinks of you tonight Though you're far away She's with you night and day Good night, children Everywhere Tired of rules, regulations and routines, people began to call it the Boer War. The phony war. Another month gone. The news varies very little. We are still awaiting the big things which must happen and incredibly have not happened yet. We are just a bit weary of it after all these long months. Life is so pointless that it's hardly worth making the effort to make a success of it, as it seems to lead you nowhere. Then, on the 10th of May, 1940, German troops stormed into France, Belgium, the Netherlands and Luxembourg. Denmark and Norway had already fallen. British troops in France were in retreat. Sergeant Pexton fought with the Durham Light Infantry. 7 a.m. Germans came from nowhere. Proper surprised us. Got down to it in the open and fought for all we knew. Getting wiped out this time, all right. He's sending everything he has at us. French infantryman Gustave Fulcher was a farmer's son from the Languedoc. We marched for some time across the hills. We see vehicles from time to time, supply wagons, artillery trucks that have been bombed. Some disemboweled horses here and there badly hit. Some are not yet dead and let out plaintive groans as we pass by. Blitzkrieg consumed Europe. The diary of 22-year-old German Hans Perels in the morning, we searched houses. The population here is very afraid of us barbarians. A woman was throwing herself at my feet, imploring me not to kill her children. 
I told her in my broken French that we were only looking for weapons. But she didn't believe me. She cried and begged and cried. As he retreated, Gustave Folcher witnessed the fall of France. The civilians put together their meager belongings. It is sad, and it tears me apart. Poor people, to abandon their houses, their cattle and poultry, and everything which seemed to be prospering and gave them their pleasure in life. The children look wide-eyed, not yet understanding everything that is happening. The day draws to an end, and all the time the refugees pass by in every type of transport. It wasn't long before Falscher was captured. We were prisoners now, and a new life was going to start. For us, the war was over. Around midday, they made us get into threes and form a column and walk forward down the road. The march was very difficult. Suddenly, we remembered that we hadn't eaten for a very long time. If only we could have had something to drink, but it was impossible. The British Expeditionary Force, with their French allies, are fighting a desperate battle in the northern zone of the Western Front. They have withdrawn some miles towards the coast. <laughs> 